Wonderful. Okay, yogis. Let's start in the seats, cross-legged or kneeling. And one of the things that yoga has also allowed me to do is to do things differently. You know, notice your habits. 99% of the time I cross my legs. So today I'm going to move just to do things differently. And then just settle into the seat. Close your eyes for a moment. And we have, most of us expressed, we've had a, you know, busy day, busy week. So let's just sit still and become present. Land onto our mat. And I'd like to invite you to bring your attention, your mind, even though your eyes are closed, to the furthest point that you can think of. Maybe it's your, the walls of your house. Maybe it's the distance between your home and your work. Maybe it's the distance between you and your family, if your family is abroad. Maybe it's something up towards the cosmos, towards the universe. Think about the furthest place that you can bring into your mind. It might take a couple of moments to discover a place, maybe it's multiple places. And now as if you draw that energy that exists between your body and that place in the distance, start to make that distance closer, almost like you're walking from that place to your room and to your mat. So really consciously drawing your attention from outwards, from the outer world, slowly closer to yourself, to yourself, to yourself, to yourself, and you, you might get distracted. And then just feel the breath. Enter your body. So really keep your attention and your energy close to yourself with slow deep breaths in and out. And yes, it's very natural for the mind to wander and go outwards again, because that's where we spend most of our day, our week. But catch yourself and just go, okay, now let me go in my body. And the breath can help you connect to the body. Slow down and deepen the breath. And let this hour be all about you. Your breath, your thoughts, your emotions. And one thing I've learned, I had a lovely lunch with a, with a colleague of mine, a very wise colleague of mine as well. We were sharing, we love to talk deep talk about the mind and the heart and dharma and purpose. And I realized that sometimes, you know, because I want people to be happy and free and I want myself to be happy and free, it's an overriding of the fact that I can sometimes also not feel like that. So really allow yourself to feel whatever you feel. We are allowed to sometimes feel sad. We are allowed to sometimes feel angry. We are allowed to feel these things inside ourselves. We just don't always have to act upon them. I think sometimes I'm a bit strict with myself and I'm not even allowing myself to feel angry. Like, no, Joelle, you're a kind person. You, you, you don't feel angry. No, some things make you feel a certain way and then suppressing that feeling actually makes it feed on itself. So allow the feelings and the thoughts to rise and fall. No judgment, no attachment. We are not bad people when we have a, a feeling of anger or sadness inside us. It's the acting upon it that will make the massive difference. So I thought it was a quite a freeing <laughs> and interesting awareness for myself. And it's lovely to share that with you. Maybe you resonate with it, maybe not. Let's sit still for a couple more rounds of breath. I guess it could fall under the theme of compassion, being compassionate towards yourself. If a friend tells you I'm angry, I'm not acting angry, I feel angry, you can be compassionate towards them. 
But now you can also translate that because this practice is all about spending time with yourself. You can be compassionate with yourself, with your own thoughts and feelings. Be with what is. Three more rounds of breath. Notice if your mind has wandered, draw it back onto the four corners of your mat. And then you may place your hands in front of the heart, a gesture. Maybe a setting of an intention or dedicating your practice to someone else. Compassion is something that you'd like to work with on and off your mat. You can even include that into a mantra. I am compassion. I am compassionate. A humble bow of the brain, the mental world to your heart, your center of feeling and loving. And then let's come into um, a forward fold, simple forward fold, Paschimottanasana. Legs go straight in front of you and you can relax your feet. If you have a prop and you want to just either bring it lengthwise, or over in the other way, direction you may. Another way is to maybe, it depends. <laughs> forward folds are interesting in people. Some people is like, okay, this is my forward fold, you know, that's okay. Other people just sandwich their bodies down. There's no judgment. So you just kind of wiggle forward, see where you're at. A belt can help. Maybe I'll, I'll grab a belt. If you are, if you feel that the back line of your body is quite stiff, and your forward fold feels challenging. You're not one of those sandwich people. <laughs> and you can use your belt to just sit upright. And for most of us, this will already give us sensations in the back line of the body. Notice when you classify things as better or worse, a person that is sandwiching their body is not a better person than a person that cannot. We're just all different and unique. Forward folds are down regulating. Very nice. Select your fingers, your toes. And notice if I would give you a marker and you would scan your body. So start at the soles of the feet. And then think about the back of your heels. So you're looping your attention from the soles of the feet behind your heels, up towards your calves, the back of your knees, your hamstrings, your bum, your lower back, middle back, upper back, neck, back of skull to the top of the skull, maybe even your shoulders. Where on that line that we're stretching, it's called your back line. Do you feel most sensation? Is it more in the hemi? Is it more around the upper back? And breathe towards that area. You can breathe into the nose. And out of the mouth. And soften when you breathe out. Compassion comes in here as well. Your body is perfect just the way it is. And now we help it relax. We help it heal. We help it ground. We help it calm down. Turn inwards and just forget about the outer world for a little bit. Stay with your breath. Soften the jaw. Folding your spine forward. So the vertebra in the lower back, around the neck, and just lengthen. A sigh, ah, just to let go of any tension that's still residual. Ah, just let it out. Mm. 
Notice when the mind wanders and it's totally normal. You've got your breath. And your breath is your biggest tool to draw you as close, to draw your attention as close to yourself as possible. Use the breath. Counting the breath can also help. Around four to six counts to fill up. Six to eight to even 10 counts. Really nice and slow to breathe out. Couple more rounds of breath here. And slowly roll all the way up. Hmm, already feeling a little different, which is nice. Step onto your left foot. So your left foot is to the front. Now, if you have a sensitive knee, you can roll up your mat or even use a, a little pillow or something. I don't really have a sensitive knee, but why not spoil yourself a little extra? Make it extra comfortable. Not that all these shapes are comfortable. <laughs> Some are actually very challenging. Even warming up a bit is nice. And then you step your left foot forward. Now, one or two blocks might come in handy. So you can place your block on the inside of the left foot, place your hands on top, and now aim for a straight back. So if you would see my back leg, you would draw a line. The back leg and the spine are in line with each other. So some of us might need higher blocks or even two blocks. You can also put one block on each side of the foot. Nice. Right. Opening up into the hip. Now there's one thing, if you are quite flexible, and I'm relatively flexible, I can hang into my joints. Here, now I'm flopping. I'm not doing anything, I'm just hanging into my joints. Pull out a little bit. So it's not total engagement, but you're not going to the max. It's just like an eight out of 10. And probably stacking that knee above your ankle. Now close your eyes and breathe. Can you roll the shoulders up and away from the ears? So there's this length through the neck. And breathe. We're breathing into our groin and the right hip flexor, the right quadricep, maybe the left hamstring. What do you feel? What do you notice? And because your chest is open and upright, it's, a, it's nice and relatively easy to breathe here. Yeah, lovely, Emma. That's it. Stay with your breath. 
So Yana, the next time we'll do yin, we'll be in Bali. Can you believe it? Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a thumbs up. <laughs> Maybe we can do, a, if the, that's, a that's the only challenge. The, while in Bali, the yin is going to be challenging from a time point of view because there's six hours ahead. So it's um, 11 o'clock in the evening now. So we'll have to figure that out. I think I'll be able to teach the Mondays and Tuesdays because seven plus six is one o'clock. So it's lunchtime. Yeah? So we'll bring the online yogis with to Bali and even the Scarborough people, if they want to join us online, obviously you're welcome. The yin, I'll probably send links while I'm in Bali. We'll make a plan. Stay with your breath. See, that's me. My mind is going to the future, <laughs> drawing you away from this moment, and it's fine. It's also a very interesting thing to observe, to get to know yourself, and to observe the thoughts in the sense that either they are busy with the past or your mind is busy with the future. I know that I'm a person because I like to plan and organize. My mind is probably 80% of the time if I'm not like, hopefully I try to be as present as possible, but when I'm not, my mind goes to the future, not so much to the past. I hardly go like, oh, I said this, I should have, I, I do, I reflect in my meditation when life, maybe I've said something that I regret, but often I just call the person and I say, okay, sorry, I didn't mean it like that. And then it's done and over with. So the, the past doesn't really stick to me, but the future, is where my mind resides a lot. So it's interesting to observe your own thoughts in that sense. And knowing that you can draw yourself again back into the here and now by breathing and just following your breath. The edge <laughs> might have presented itself now. It's quite a strong stretch, quite a, quite a strong opening of your body. Now, for the last minute and a half, you can turn your left foot out to the side, keep your right hand on the block, and then maybe lift your back leg and bring maybe, yeah? this is all maybe, and add a quite a strong stretch of your right quadricep. That's all optional. Breathe. Close your eyes, maybe. That's also a way to draw the attention inwards as if the outer world just simply does not exist. Or at least we forget about it for just a little while, which is very, 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 very beneficial. Gently let go of your right foot, be gentle. Hands can come to the floor. Now, you don't actually have to un undo the rolling of the mat, you can. We're going to do half hero's pose. Now, you are going to sit on the inside of the right leg. The important thing is that all your five toes, specifically your pinky toe, is on the floor, so the heel is not pointing in. Then you can use your hand to move the calf a little out of the side. Your bum is gonna sit on the inside of the leg. So, oops, it's a bit of a puzzle. I'm gonna use my block and sit, shimmy, shimmy. So I will wanna show you on this side. Your, I like to have the block in that way. So. The heel is next to the bum. The heel is pointing straight up. The toes are all pointing down, including the pinky one. 
the other leg is pointing straight forward. Now, yes, there might be people that need to go higher. There might be people that can sit on the floor or on something lower. Just make sure that if you do that, I feel I'm not ready yet because my right hip is lifting. It's also because I'm wearing a lot of clothes, I guess. So that's a no. So I'm just going to go back here. But if you want to go down and you feel that you've got space, it might also come a little later. Then you bring your left arm up to the sky. Guys, I've got belts here for, for you as well. Left arm up, left hand comes in between your shoulder blades. So I'll show you here. And then you can hold on to two edges of the belt. Or if you don't have a belt, you can bring the hand on top. So you're stretching nicely into the left tricep. Some people can interlace their hands. I'm going to use a belt today. I'm going to be extra gentle with myself. Good. So much close. Hoodies in the way. Yeah, now pull your navel in a little bit. And try to sit up straight. Now, it's also one of the things I really love and like to fascinate on is if with my eyes closed, I can feel my body if it's upright. Sometimes we were like, no, I'm upright. And then you open your eyes and like, oh, I'm actually not. But just that feeling into your body and knowing where your body parts are. So you can... What, is your, what are the toes of your left foot doing? Are they active? Are they relaxing? Just draw your attention to them. And that also allows you to kind of not get distracted and draw your attention elsewhere. So scan the body. You might start with your left foot, your left ankle, the knee. Know where your body is. And then once you start to come with your attention closer to your hips, feel if there's equal weight in both sit bones. Often the tendency is to lean a little to the right, except if you're all the way down on the floor, then often the right hip lifts a little. Feel the floor under your right shin. Pull the navel slightly in so you lengthen the lower back. Stack your head straight above the spine, straight above your shoulders and breathe. Your left elbow points straight up, your right elbow points straight down. For most of us, quite a big stretch in the shoulder area. Stay with the breath, slow breaths in, slow breaths out. Soften the skin on your face. Notice if your head is falling forward. It's also something that happens a lot. So lift the crown or press the back of the head as if there's a wall behind you, an imaginary wall. So you're sitting upright, open to breathe. <sighs> and then the last thing, once you've kind of scanned the position of your body, is to again notice where you feel most of the sensations is it's in your knee your hips for me it's the right shoulder i can feel starting to talk in a way and then we just stay still and use the breath to support this moment and to draw us into our body Funny, I catch myself breathing ujjayi because I practice so much vinyasa that it's become a habit. And yin, we don't ujjayi breath really. Ujjayi is more energizing, 
So try to breathe. It's not the word free is not the right word. It's softer, almost slower. There's no restriction in the back of the throat. It's a gentle inhale through the nose and just a soft, slow breaths out of the mouth. So I tend to go in and out of the nose with, the, with that ujjayi breath. Hard to breathe out of the mouth. Interesting today. Keep an upright posture. Couple more rounds of breath, round two, three. Now, be gentle with your shoulders because this is quite a deep stretch. So you can maybe let go of your belt and then activate your fingers. So open the hands, spread the fingers and slowly release. Ooh, la, 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 la. Don't know if you feel that, but my right shoulder is like, wheel, wheel, wheel. Okay. Roll off your block. Release that right knee. Come onto your back and hug that right knee in towards your chest. You may want to plop prop on the left side of your body, whether it's a bolster or a block. And then we come into our spinal twist with the right knee over towards the left and an option to add on. We are all cat lovers. <laughs> cat and dog lovers, but lots of cat lovers. We call it the cat that catches its own tail. Now, how does that look? So you roll onto the side, your right knee. Can be on something, probably nicest, but you feel that you're on the left side of the body. So you've scooped your hips a little and then shimmy your shoulders back. So you want to have your shoulders flat to the floor. Yes, and then you can bend your left leg, that's the one that is along the floor. And maybe your right hand can find that left foot. You can lift your head slightly, tuck your chin in, or even turn the nose towards the right. Just see what feels good. Remember, this is a twist, and if you just want to have that right knee over to the left and have your left leg nice and relaxed, do that. There are different options, different people. I sometimes compare it to, you know, when you go out for dinner or something. We won't all order the same thing. We like different things, and it's the same here. Do something that, that feels good, where you can breathe, Make you smile, where you can digest and integrate your week, your day. And I'm very happy that I've discovered yin because it allowed me to discover a place inside myself that is calm, not anxious not stress, so it exists inside me. So when I'm not like that, I have introduced or I've allowed things, you know, life is life. You can't just sit, well, some people do, um, sit on a rock on a mountain for the rest of your life. There you will probably not be very stressed. Life happens, we have external challenges, but then to know it's almost like a reassurance, like, oh, yes, it, it exists inside me. I haven't lost contact and connection to that part of myself that knows how to relax, to breathe, to not feel overwhelmed. A reminder and an exploration. 
and even feeling comfortable with just being, being still. Let the jaw hang, oh, a little yawn. That's a good shape. We'll be still. Enjoy the music, enjoy your breath. Enjoy the stillness. Gently let go, roll onto your back and just lie onto your back into what we call a little rebar. So you just place your feet hip width apart. You can place your right hand on your tummy and your left hand on your heart. And just feel maybe some tingling sensations. Maybe the right leg feels a little different from the left. The hips might feel a slightly different. And breathe into your full respiratory system, the chest, the heart, the belly, and the collarbones lift when you breathe in. And everything just falls back to net, neutral and the exhale, four more rounds of breath. And then slowly roll onto the side. Gently press yourself back up onto your hands and your knees. And we'll do all of that to the other side. So maybe you want to start with rolling up your mat if you want some padding for your knee. Make your movement slow, almost a little like, I don't know what the word is, like 
as if you're not here, <laughs> like super, super slow, not wanting to really pay any attention to what goes on around you, not engaging the muscles too much, stay in the very soft energy. Left knee onto the rolled up mat, one or two blocks, nice. And try to straighten your arms there, Jeremy. I would go for the lo for the little bit higher. Yes. See how you, yeah, now you're brought into the shoulders. Very nice. And close your eyes, maybe, and just breathe. When you get to know your body a little bit more subtly, you can start to feel differences with right and left. The right side of the body is also often referred to as the feminine side, the yin side, and the left, the masculine side, the yan side. Now, again, I had such a nice lunch with my friend. We were speaking about masculine energy, feminine energy, and that's not a male, like sexual, like a male or a woman. It's more like we all have masculine and feminine energy inside ourselves. And the divine masculine energy is driven and it's, it, it almost provides a container, a safe container for the divine feminine energy, the creative energy to be free, to be safe, to be grounded. Now, it doesn't mean that men need to be a container for women. That, that's not what I'm trying to say. We all have both masculine and feminine energy inside us. And when it's all balanced, there is um, like extreme masculine energy would be competitively driven to a point that your own individual success is, you know, a bit like an alpha male. <laughs> well, that's, that's not, you know, creating union or, or beneficial energy for, for people around you. So there's a very interesting, I, it really fascinated me again, and I want to research a little bit more about it. And also noticing that certain people provide for you that masculine energy, that provide for you a container where you can be safe. And in that safe container, you can be creative. When we don't feel safe, creativity starts to dim down. This is a very interesting dance of the feminine and masculine energy. Interesting thing. I would definitely want to research a bit more again about it. And observing it within yourself. And that again also is your body in the right and the left that might tell you something when one side is more tight or injuries start to be more on one side or the other. Just observe it. The observation is all that matters. And from there, you can maybe go into the deeper layers of yourself. And just explore, self-explore. Stay with your breath. Maybe remind yourself of that intention or dedication. Breathe, interesting sensations, tintling, whatever you might feel. We are almost going to stay or transition into that last little change where we turn. If you did that on the other side, you turn the right foot a little out. Left hand can stay on the block. Just see if your body's okay with it. Press yourself away and then lift the back leg, open up and hold on to your left foot. Heel can come closer. Just again, find that edge where it's breathable, smileable, maybe also a little bit challenging. And use the breath.
And gently let go of the foot. Be careful with that back knee. And slowly lift up. Option to keep it like that or to slide the mat away for our hero's pose on the other side. I'll turn around again. So you can, no, actually it's this side, excuse me. Block goes, I think somewhere close to your ankle almost, quite far, depends on the length of your legs. Check that the front of the foot is down, including the pinky toe. You can help that calf a little bit out of the way. Okay, I need to go more backwards, actually next to my heel. Lovely. Your belt might come in handy there. Good, right arm up. Maybe a bit of wiggling to see where you want to be. Belt might come in. And for me, this is one of those massive difference between right and left. Almost then I'm like, hmm? wow. Forgot now. Yeah, here I can easily, easily hold on to the fingers. Other side, it's like not so much. Can also be tension inside the sockets of your shoulders. I'm still going to use a belt on this side. Compassion. Sometimes and often less is more. Come back to your breath. Slow, deep breaths in. Slow, breaths out. And I find it interesting when I teach these classes both here and you guys are online with us, is that there's something that changes in the, in the collective energy in the space. And that alone is a proof that our central nervous system pick up on each other's energy. We are energetical beings. And even though our online people are not here in the space physically, knowing with my eyes closed, I can now see Marlies set up. I've seen most of you guys set up. We are moving and breathing or being still together. And you, I can just imagine the kind of energy that is in your houses and the energy that is here. And we are all individually contributing to that. And when we step off our mats, we take that with us. So this practice is for you, but in the end, it will also have a ripple effect on your family, on your partners, on your animals. When you come home tonight, when you you know, step off your mat, something will have shifted. And that is beautiful. Check your posture. Where's your right foot? Where's your left foot? Where's your knee? Where are the sensations? Are your sit bones equally grounded in your block or the floor? Is your spine upright? Is your head upright? Is your neck, neck nice and long? Is your jaw relax? Where is your breath? Be with your body, the sensations in your breath. Soften the skin on your face.
Two more rounds of breath here. Oh, we decided it was hardest for me specifically the shoulders. Open the hands, jazz hands. I call them jazz hands. And then, oh, la la. Interesting. It was on the other side, it was the right shoulder that I felt. And now I feel the right arm again, even though it's the other, the other angle. Okay, just the fascination. Roll onto your sides or actually your back. Hug your left knee in towards your chest and make sure there's something on the right of you, a block or a bolster. A quick squeeze of that knee in towards your chest. And then slowly roll over your, you can even scoop your hips a little. And then decide how high you want that knee. Also, just feel actually it does make a difference. The one thing is not better than the other, but the knee higher or the knee further, it's just a different stretch. So just feel like, oh, this, yeah, this feels good to me. And that's where you stay. And then you shim your shoulders a little. And then you can choose to add the tail of the cat by bending your right knee. Settling in takes a moment and then just ah, be, be still. Twist is another one of those where we often feel a difference. Without props, you might feel it more because your props just give your body a little bit more space so the muscles can relax and therefore let go and therefore. There's more space when the muscles are super engaged. Not a lot of length, not a lot of space will be created. So let it be soft. A bit of space between the top lip and the bottom lip of your mouth. So the teeth and the jaw and everything can relax inside the mouth. And even your tongue you can relax. <sighs> mm.
four, five more rounds of breath. Take a deep breath in and a nice sigh out. <sighs> Inhale to bring your knee back to center and just come with your feet to the floor. Scoop your hips. Into your rebound, hands can be on the body or off the body. This is our last little moment before we go to Shavasana. So notice if you're warm enough or if you want to put some clothing on or start bringing a blanket towards yourself if you have one. And then you can start to come into your Shavasana. If you have a bolster or a plop prop and you want to place it under your knees, you can. That's also a lovely option there. Margarita, where you bring exactly, you bring the feet to the outside at the yoga mat and you let the knees knock in to watch each other. So Shavasana is actually a state of being. Total surrender. At home, yogis, I know some of you love to use the energy you've created for yourself now for meditation or journaling. So feel free to leave the meeting at any time or, you know, in a couple of minutes, we'll close the meeting and you can just continue your lovely self care practice.
if you're in Shavasana, I would like to stay longer. Many uh, traditional yoga methods recommend meditation after our practice because your mind is, you know, you've connected to the body and you're in the right mindset. So, you know, even, even when you leave this space and go home here in Scarborough, you're still in that, you're still very much in that blurry kind of way, very close to yourself. So even if there are things that you want to write down, that would be a good moment. Just go, sorry, I just want another 10 minutes to myself. And just write some thoughts down, some things that might have come up. And otherwise, let's now start to get ready for the rest of the evening. So start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Flash yawn. <sighs> Observe the energy closest to yourself. So again, connect to the breath. And then slowly start to, you know, become aware of here in the space, other people around us, the walls of the building, the fact that there's a whole world out there. You can start to hug your knees into what your chest, curl up like a little ball. And then roll to a side. And then maybe from your side, take your time, come back up into a seated position. And take a couple more conscious breaths. It's probably a little easier to actually connect to the breath compared to when you sit here in the beginning of class. And then you can let your mind go again, go out, go outwards to that far point to this world that we live in that is beautiful where we get an opportunity to share and yes, to learn and yes, to get challenged and yes, to feel whatever we feel. What we, through the practice of yoga, we recognize it when it bubbles up, whether it's really pleasant feelings or whether it's very really challenging feelings. And just because we notice it, we can pause and go, okay, okay, this is what I'm feeling. Do I have to act upon this? Or can I actually take a deep breath instead? I sometimes forget because this is my work. So I'm surrounded by conscious living people, intentional living people, that there's many, 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 many people that don't have these tools. They don't either haven't had access or they just, if it's too difficult for them, I don't know. It's, it's, not a, it's, it's not a judgmental thing, but I feel very blessed to be surrounded by you guys and to have an opportunity to, you know, just ex keep exploring and growing and having the tools to cope with life when it gets challenging. So thank you for being here, for taking care of yourself, for recharging. Namaste.